Good evening, everyone. It is Thursday, December 10th, 2020. And I hope that uh, once again, that today has been a good day for you. I've been home most of the day. If you were with us yesterday, then you know that uh, my wife had a tooth extracted yesterday. So uh, she's doing fine. She's um, a little bit uh, woozy from the medication, the painkillers and such. But I uh, just wanted to stay home with her today in order to uh, make sure that uh, she was well taken care of. And uh, I don't know if she would answer that, that she was well taken care of or not, but did my best. Um, and uh, she's been a great patient. And uh, y'all continue to be in prayer for her as she uh, recovers from that. We're going to finish up uh, what we've been doing all week. Uh, beginning Sunday and then uh, Tuesday night and Wednesday night, as we've looked at different prophecies related to uh, Jesus' arrival. This is December, the month we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, is coming to earth as a human being. And though that uh, happened 2,000 years ago, it was prophesied long before it actually took place. God rules the past, the present, and the future. And the fact that he knows what tomorrow holds and that he has communicated that through his prophets at different times uh, tells us that God has a plan and that plan is going to be uh, finished out regardless of what you and I do, regardless of what those who are in opposition to him do. Uh, he wants to use us to help accomplish that plan and he wants to bless us um, as we participate in that plan. But if we choose to walk away from that plan, if we choose to reject what it is that he wants to do in our lives, then we will face the consequences. So be wise and uh, follow after God's plan. Learn what that plan is in Scripture for your day to day and uh, live it out. And then you will get to receive, reap the blessings that come along with that. Uh, got a lot to cover in a very short period of time. As usual, we're going to do our best to keep it at about 15 minutes tonight. So if you're with us right now, stay with us. I think that you will receive an encouragement as well as a challenge from what we have to look at here tonight. We're going to look at uh, one more prophecy uh, related to not so much Jesus, but related to still related to him, but related to his predecessor, John the Baptist. And uh, as John prepared the way for Jesus Christ to come and fulfill his mission um, here on earth. Before we do, let's go ahead and pray together. I want to mention a couple of things to you. One, we, I've shared several prayer requests over the last couple of nights. I'm not going to uh, go back and repeat each of those, but uh, I'd encourage you to at least look at the beginnings of the last two nights uh, broadcasts so, so that you can pick up on those prayer requests and pray about those. Let me share a couple of others with you. I was talking with a, a young lady today um, her name is Ashley, and uh, her family ha is going through it, has been going through it like many families around us, but this is one that I'm aware of. And so you could just be in prayer for them. It just seems like they get hit time after time after time again, and just about the time it looks like they're, they're going to be moving forward, something else happens. Some of you know what that feels like. And uh, so if you could be in prayer for Ashley and her family, would uh, greatly appreciate that. Then let me give you a little bit of an update on a couple of people uh, from our church or related to our church. Uh, Gene Wagner and Sam Beiser uh, talked to uh, Terry today, and uh, Gene, uh, really no uh, change there. Uh, so continue to be in prayer for her as she battles COVID. And then Sam Beiser as well, he's in the hospital with COVID, uh, still on very high oxygen. But that's about the only update that, that I have in regard to him right now. But do continue to lift up both of these in prayer, as well as many others that you are aware of that are facing uh, this dread disease right now, as well as other issues and uh, other things that are going on. If you've got a prayer request that you'd like to leave with us, uh, probably won't see it right now, at least not me. Others that are here will see it and can join in praying about those things, and I'll see it later. Uh, so uh, if you've got any prayer requests or just want to, in general, put down prayers, please, uh, then we will lift you up and lift up whatever situations you present uh, before the Father, and he can do a whole lot more with those situations than any of us can. Let's go ahead and pray together. 
Father, as we come to you right now, I thank you so much for your blessings to us, your grace, your goodness. You are good regardless of whether we see our circumstances being good or not. And I know that you use even the negative circumstances in our lives in order to bring glory to yourself and in order to benefit us, maybe not in the short term, but definitely in the long term. Help us to maintain a good, maintain a good attitude, Father. Help us to shine the light on Jesus Christ. And I pray that we will rest in your strength rather than resting in our own or in the strength of those around us, I pray. We have many around us that are going through desperate times. Give them strength. Give them enablement, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. One more thing I wanted to mention before we get into our study for tonight. You can go ahead and be turning to the book of Malachi, chapter 4. That's where we're going to be. That's the last book in the Old Testament, right before Matthew. Uh, but one more thing I want to mention is that uh, every day at our church, Danville Community Baptist Church in Rawlings, Maryland, I'm opening the church up from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock for anybody who would like to come and pray. Not a socializing time. This is just time to come and pray silently before God. You can pray at home. That's true. God is no more um, present in the church than he is anywhere else. But being in that environment just helps to get a, get our, our 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 minds focused on what it is that we're doing, and uh, just coming to that place to be able to lift up our voices before God for COVID and those that are dealing with it, as well as other situations that might be going on in your life. We're in Malachi chapter four. I'm going to read for us verses four through six, the very last three verses of the Old Testament. This is the way the Old Testament closes out. It says this, Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for, Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Let me read one more verse for you. It's in chapter 3 and verse 1. It says this, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. As I said, we have been looking at some prophecies related to Jesus and his first coming. Uh, Sunday morning, we dealt with three of them. Tuesday, one more. Yesterday, one more. And tonight we're going to deal with this one. This one, as I said, is not related so much to Jesus specifically, but it is related to uh, a relative of his uh, that was just a little bit older than him, John the Baptist. It says that John, um, though his, his name is not identified here in Malachi, the things that are said here are later connected to him, and Jesus confirmed that. Uh, that John was the one that was sent by God in order to prepare people's hearts to receive the Lord, to prepare the pathway for the Messiah. The other prophecies that we have looked at this week uh, came at a time in um, Israel's history where they were going through great crisis. That crisis was a result of their own actions. They had rebelled against God. They had uh, practiced idolatry, um, adultery, um, a lot of other issues. But those were the, the primary ones that caused God to uh, bring about some very destructive uh, forces in their lives, bring an enemy against them, and eventually caused them to go into captivity. Even as they were going into captivity, though, God told them and showed them that he was going to be merciful toward them. They were, though they were facing some discipline, his mercy had not run out for them. One of the passages that is included in that time is there are these words, great is thy faithfulness. Your mercies are new every morning. And those words were being said even as Israel was on the way into captivity. God is faithful to his promises. God's mercy is poured out with just as much um, volume as his justice is, and perhaps more so. So Israel was going through a crisis, and that 
But in the midst of it, God was promising them that a Messiah would come and that they would return home back to their homeland. By the time we get to Malachi, that had happened. The crisis was passed. The Jerusalem was rebuilt. The wall around the city was rebuilt. The temple was rebuilt. In fact, things have pretty much gone back to normal. Does that sound familiar? Not the normal part yet, but the crisis part. That's where we are right now. And and you hear it over and over again. I've said it a few times. Man, if we could just get things to go back to normal. And lately, you've probably been hearing a lot of people talking about, uh, I wonder what parts of what we're doing right now are going to be the new normal for us. Mask wearing, social distancing, some of those different kinds of things normalcy. We want things to go back to the way that they were. Well, that's where Israel was. Things had gone back to the way that things were. But if you read through the book of Malachi, though the people were happy with how things were going relatively, God was not. Uh, yes, people had left behind, for the most part, their, their idolatry, but they had substituted some other issues in place of that. God was, though Malachi is a short book, just four chapters long, it packs a punch because God was dealing with his people. It's almost as if God was saying to them, I, I, I sent all this struggle into your life, all this um, these difficulties, this pain into your life in order to wake you up and break you out of the normal that you were in then. And it worked for a while, but now you've shifted back into a, a, a new normal, perhaps, and some of the old normal as well. And you've gotten very comfortable in your situation such that it looks like I'm going to have to send some new strife, some new struggle into your life in order to wake you up again. We are right now as a society here in Allegheny County, which is where I live, and Mineral County. Some, Many of you in our church live there as well. But some of you are watching from much further away. But we're all dealing with the same issue right now. Pandemic. It's worldwide. God, I don't know, has God brought this? I don't know. Has God allowed it? Definitely. God never wastes a crisis. You've heard that said about some other people in a negative kind of way, but it's true of God as well. God doesn't want to waste a crisis. What is it that God is doing through COVID? If everything goes back to the way that things were before COVID, won't we have wasted COVID? I think there's some lessons that God wants us to learn. I think there's some things that God is wanting us to do. I think there's some preparations that God is making in order to get us to the point where we're shaken up out of our normalcy, out of our complacency, in order that we might depend on him. See, that's often what God does is he sends some kind of crisis, some kind of situation into our lives because we were, everything was comfortable. So we, 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 we thought we didn't need him as much as we actually do. We got comfortable just depending upon ourselves or the other people around us, our jobs, our cars, our health. And when God says, I'm supposed to be the one that you're depending upon. And so sometimes he takes out from under us those crutches that we were leaning on. If everything goes back to the way that it was after COVID, I don't think that God will be so pleased with that. If instead we learn to depend on him, if we learn to take advantage of every resource that we have to communicate the gospel to people, if we learn the value of the other people around us that we were separated from, if we, if we start to be grateful for the things that we were starting to take for granted. If we lose our grip on this world 
and anticipate with excitement the world that is yet to come, then maybe just maybe this time frame and the difficulties that we've gone through won't be wasted. Today, uh, as in between Malachi and Matthew, there are 400 approximately years, sometimes referred to the 400 years of silence. Uh, it's not that God wasn't doing anything. It's just that God didn't uh, make his voice known uh, through different writing prophets and such. But things were still happening in Israel. One of them, they were they were invaded once again. Some difficulties happened. In fact, uh, today, first day of Hanukkah, is the commemoration of part of what was going on there in those in that time period known as the intertestam intertestamental, <laughs> hard to say, time period. God is still a miracle working God. He was a miracle working God then. He is a miracle God working God now. And at the end of that time frame, it's recorded in Luke chapter 1 that an individual by the name of John the Baptist came and fulfilled that prophecy. It says in Luke chapter 1 and verse 17, angel speaking to Ze Zechariah, John the Baptist's dad, says these words, And he, John, shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. We're going to be looking more at that passage come Sunday morning, even as I'm working on the message for Sunday morning. And later on, Zechariah's dad, he uh, said these words in reference to his son. Uh, Zechariah, uh, Luke chapter 1, starting verse 76, says, And thou, child, speaking of his son, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. So I had a question for you. Do you want normal? Do you want things to go back to the way that they were? Or do you want a new normal? I'm not talking about masks and I'm not talking about social distancing. I'm talking about dependence upon God. And I'm talking about a recognition that we need to start sharing our faith with people more fervently and more passionately because we just don't know how much time we or they or the world has left. God wants to do something through the pain that he has allowed into our world and into our lives. Don't halt his efforts. Ask him, God, what, what are you doing in my life? Not just what are you doing in the world, but what are you doing in my life? How would you have me to respond to the situations that are going on in this world and the situations that I'm facing in my life right now? And humbly bow at his feet, allowing him to do whatever it is he desires to do in and through your situation. Well, I hope these words have been both an encouragement and a challenge you tonight. We'll not have Bible study tomorrow night. It's Friday, but I want to encourage you to join with us uh, Sunday morning, 1045. If you don't have a church home right now, or for those of you that are already part of our church, be with us Sunday morning, 1045. We're going to be dealing some more with John. I'm excited about the message on Sunday. God has been showing me some great things that have been a challenge and encouragement to me. And I believe that they will be in a challenge and encouragement to you as well. Uh, don't forget to share this uh, on your timeline or wherever else you have opportunity. If these words have been encouragement to you, or if you know somebody else that would, would benefit from them, then please share it. We have our um, outdoor movie coming up on Saturday night. Uh, it's looking like we're going to have great weather for that. Uh, look at our, uh, you can see more information about that on our Facebook page. And I'd encourage you to uh, be a part of that. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Um, we'll see you soon. Know that you are loved and that you are being prayed for.